background, you see that this mountain, Black Mountain, has already been stripped a bit. Uh, it represents a quick fix for energy. It represents greed because it is the cheapest way of mining a coal around here. At the same time, it scars the mountain, it destroys the ecosystem. Through the uh, Stations of the Cross, which we are going to go and, uh, and pray in the next couple of minutes, we remember how Jesus was tortured and then condemned to death. Well, so we, in our own way of greed, will torture creation and we will condemn it to death. Ultimately, we're condemning ourselves to death. We will kill ourselves. This is almost like a suicide unless we can live in harmony with what has God has given us. I'm concerned about the uh, people in this region, about those that are affected by the mining, uh, about those who struggle for jobs. And I think that uh, coal mining hasn't served any, uh, has not served the purpose of really providing jobs for people. And I think that we need to look at more sustainable job in the future. But I think we need to come together as a community to pray about it. And prayer as a central focus, uh, I think, can help us come to some solutions together. The cross, um, you know, shows the victory of God in the face of death and oppression, uh, that the last word is not death, despair, but is hope, life, resurrection. Corporate greed abuses the people and land. Consider how the cheapest way to mine coal causes the greatest damage to property and creation. Let us take the symbol of the cross as our sign of generosity. Well, the church should be involved in this because God created all this and God said it was good. And if you look uh, geologically, uh, geologists tell us that the Appalachian Mountains are the oldest mountains on earth. So that means God made them first. And it seems to me that God, you know, like any creator, would have particular love for that which he created first. And to, to destroy these mountains that have been here from the beginning um, is just absolutely, I, I can't wrap my mind around it. And I think as a Christian, it's just, to me, it's spitting in the face of God. Consider how the land and mineral rights became separated by law allowing mining companies to strip the land. First of all, you have the destruction of the top of the mountain. It releases minerals that go into the water table. Number two, you have flooding that's caused because of the, um, uh, the denuding of the mountain. Through the blasting, you have fissures in people's foundations. So you have a, a very physical thing that's happened to the community below. Then when you look at the, the uh, the ecosystem itself. You find that species uh, are being disrupted. Uh, there's a decline in songbirds, for example. There's introduction of new species that we haven't even had in the mountains. So there's a disruption of the ecosystem that loving God has put the, together and nature has uh, in balance. So consider that 47 percent of Kentucky rivers and streams are too polluted for drinking, fishing, or swimming. them eternal rest on earth and may everlasting light shine upon them with your saints forever O mountains rest in peace that there are a few of us at least that feel this way about our mountains and think that it's um, an atrocity against sacredness mm -hmm to tear down something that's so rare. I hope that it raises awareness with other people too that 
that, yeah, our mountains, like she said, are sacred. Respect for the sacredness of the mountains and appreciation for what we have that we take for granted. The l less electricity, recycle, just uh, the smallest things could help. God, God put humanity in the garden to care and cultivate it. That's Genesis 2.15. All of us are to be co-gardeners with God. We are supp supposed to be stewards. We talk about the common good. The common good is not just for my uh, gain, it is for the entire community. And the community extends to the next generations. Not just simply, we'll use everything up this generation. We've got to look out for subsequent generations. That's the kind of uh, issue that is at stake when it comes to a theological reflection on care of creation.